Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Better Way of Life. And actually, this morning, <laughs> it felt like it wasn't a better way of life for a few minutes, didn't it? Because just as we were going to start, um, and everybody was on, and everybody was talking, and we were having a nice little, hello, how are you, you know, how are you doing, and all of that sort of thing, um, it just went wrong. Well, for a start, Paula couldn't get in, our special guest. She couldn't get in. It just came up with a message saying uh, that her devices weren't recognised or something similar to that. And we were looking at a USB plug on the screen. And then we got Paula in. And then just as Paula came in, you disappeared. And went. bang, and off it went. And there it went. And I, just, I think at the point when it happened, I'd been moaning about all the other tech problems I was having last night. If you, I've now, and I've told you this before, right? If you moan about tech, it knows and it listens and then it gets upset. You know? I think we're talking about printers here, aren't you? Yeah, it punishes people, you see? <laughs> anyway, hello, folks. Um, welcome to Friday. Uh, I hope you're having a good week, whatever you're doing. If you've struggled with your uh, internet this week or if you've had problems with tech if you've thrown something out the window because it just riled you uh let us know do comment uh and in the comments and, and let us know what it is that you struggled with uh but you know it's modern life as I, I i i keep saying to marianne it's modern life these days we just have to put up with tech the way it I is know, but one of the problems i had was that i had a new phone for christmas which i then put off actually setting up because of the whole headache of doing that until um maybe february mm. then one day i just looked at my phone and it said the camera wasn't working and i thought really so i thought okay i did all of the i read everything did all of that even went into a shop and said you know they said yeah we can get a new camera for 80 quid i thought oh kidding me so anyway spoke to tim he said no i'll send it back to the shop have my old phone and, put, and I thought, oh, God, I'll have to go through this again. So I dealt for over a week and a half without my phone camera, which isn't so much of a problem. I need it when I'm teaching. But where it comes a problem is when my Virgin box wasn't working. Um, so that wasn't working as well. Then they gave me a new Virgin box. You wiped all the programs off. And I thought, ah, start all over again. But then it says to you, if you want to watch, because a lot of them you have to watch in the apps now, what does it say to you? Yeah, you've got to connect using the QR code, which is wonderful if your camera's working. And my camera wasn't working. So I set it all up with Samuel. Then they gave me new remotes and it wiped it all again. So, um, yeah. But the thing is, and I, I'm I'm going to bring I'm going to bring Paula in to, to hear this part of the conversation. Let's welcome Paula to the stage. Paula Cashmore. Here we come. Good morning, Paula. The, uh, Mary, Poppins. You're, Mary, you're, Poppins. You, Mary Poppins. Okay. We're, we're, did I call you Mary or do I call you Paula? I think I, Paula's fine. Yeah. I think Paula's fine. Yeah. Um, I think that we have all got a little bit too complacent when it comes to IT because ultimately I remember chiv chiseling at a stone uh, to, to, <laughs> to do sums. So, you know, if we remember early IT, we used to wait half an hour for dial-up. And now we just assume everything's going to happen like ah, that. But is it we assume or is it because it is assumed? I wouldn't say we assume, it is assumed. Because I get really flustered when things don't work. Because then I start panicking and I'm holding other people up who assume. Sure. Oh, that that's a very good work. point. That's a very good point. Is it? Is it we assume or is it? It is, assumed. it is assumed. I think and everything it, now with these QR codes, everybody assumes you've got a camera. And it's what we're sold. We're told it will yes. take 10 seconds or 40 seconds. So we expect that. We expect to get what we pay for. Yes, absolutely. Um, I was talking to someone about that the other day because we were talking about uh, we were talking about broadband and fast broadband to your house, etc. But actually the majority of people don't have fiber mm -hmm. right to their yeah. door mm -hmm. yeah um what you have is you have fiber to the end of your street mm -hmm. and then from the end of your street to your house you have copper cable still 
and if the weather which uh, it always is in the uk is slightly damp then the copper cable decides to play silly and uh, so it's great until it gets to the copper cable and from the point of the copper cable to your computer it's naughty and that i use those words i use Wait, those words. I, I wording that thank you uh, well we're civilized here aren't we so that we're, we're, we'll stick with that paula thanks for coming on um, we're not going to spend the entire time uh discussing tech but it's it's a good icebreaker tell us a little bit about you Okay, um, Marianne and I have known each other through LinkedIn and Care for a couple of years, haven't we? Um, time goes so fast. Um, I am a mom, a grandmother, but also a nurse, um, an independent care quality consultant. I love uh, taking care of vulnerable people, protecting their rights. Um, and I like going in and supporting those people who support them. Um, that's where I am at the moment, and that's how Marianne and I met. So you're supporting supporters, yeah? Yes, yeah. They're on the front line, managers, carers, staff in care homes, staff in domiciliary care, supported living. Um, they're doing a really valuable job, and they're not always recognised. Um, sometimes they don't get the support that they need, Um well, it's interesting you should say that because actually I was looking at a list of the top 10 worst paid jobs in the UK earlier this week and carers are right in the middle of that. Yes, it does. It doesn't surprise me. Um, there's a whole issue about funding, but it's not all about funding. Uh, sometimes um, it's about training, isn't it, Marianne? Um, it's about training, it's understanding how to get the best out of your staff, supporting your manager in their well-being and how to lead and how to get the best out of their staff. So some of that does take money, but on the whole, it, it takes support and resilience. And that's where I'm there. Obviously, I, you know, I charge for my services because I have to make a living, but there needs to be more support. Um, providers need to invest in that support um, with the likes of Marianne with good training. I think you're going to be talking to Lucy at some point as well. You know, there are a lot of support services out there which don't cost the earth, but they can actually make a big difference in both the morale and the staff retention and staff satisfaction. Do you yeah. think, Paula, that it's um, to do with, because I've thought about this quite a lot, the um, whole, I, not all, obviously not all, but many that own the care companies, that maybe there's a different view of the type of business that it is. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and I, you know, I think you, I, I used to work in um, CCG NHS inspection and worked across 44 um, nursing homes uh, across the West Midlands. And you see the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, there are people that set out, they're nice people that set out to do nice things in their community, but then regulation comes along, uh, things have to change, funding changes, the complexity of the clients change. And all of a sudden, they're adding things in and onto their um, service and it becomes a clunky machine and they don't know how to dismantle the clunky and get it smooth running again. And that's where some people sort of are stuck in the 19th, 20th century when we need to be bringing people into the 21st century. I want to know, are, are we within the care sector, are we on the verge of a, a crisis like we are in other areas of support and care etc i mean it, it was interesting another another one of the 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 group on that list interestingly were dental nurses and obviously i, I live with someone that works within that that sector um 
you know, one of the issues again is uh, they're highly underpaid. Um, they actually have, you know, especially for a, a position where they require uh, insurance, they require training on a regular basis. They have to pay for a lot of that themselves. Um, it means a lot of people are then not looking to come into profession because, mm -hmm. you know, you're taking on a lot of responsibility, but for very little pay. Um, you know, it, it, it means we've got a shortage of skill. Are we? I, I can see in various sectors we're heading for major issues because people are just not going to go into it's those the, sectors. It's the support. It's the support um, areas that you know. If, yeah, if you can't get carers teaching assistants that's another one that i think they are because they don't get paid in the holiday they don't get paid holidays i think they are the lowest i think they are actually the lowest because because of that um but uh, and i was quite shocked to hear because i train at one of the dental hospitals i don't train dental nurses so don't worry about that that the dental nurses can do their training and do do it online mm -hmm. which i was quite shocked about a little bit but we see that we see that in the care industry, don't we? Um, yes, uh, CQC and the regulators don't stipulate how training should be delivered, uh, which is a bugbear for both of us. Um, so as long as they see people on their one day that they're in the service um, acting on the best behaviour, then they can say, oh, they must have had enough training and good quality training, but they don't actually check the quality of the training. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I don't, I, I think the, the, the phrase we're in a crisis, um, because I think that scares people off more. Um, I think we need to be looking at alternative provision and getting the regulators to accept that because part, part of the traditional CQC strategy is to look at your rotor to see how many bodies you've got in the building to care for your residents. Now, if we're looking at assistive technology that will replace a member of staff, then we ought to be able to say we don't have so many members of staff but we've got the ability to keep people safe and that's where i think we need the shift in the understanding that technology can help yes now you see this is really interesting as well because i come from a background talking about is this is where language is really important as well because i come from a background in assistive technology Mm -hmm. but assistive technology in the background that I come from has got nothing to do with the assistive technology you're talking about because assistive technology for me is something that helps somebody that has got uh, a problem doing their job to do their job it's it's assist them in doing mm -hmm. what it is that they need to do it's definitely not technology that would replace somebody it would never be it would certainly never be that so define for me what you think assistive to or what assistive technology means within the care sector because i think it's fascinating that we've got these kind of different semantics out there as well mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's pretty much the same. Um, they may not be replacing people per se, but whereas you may need an extra carer in a care home, um, if you have acoustic uh, technology, acoustic monitoring, you will be able to know if somebody is getting out of bed to prevent a fall or if somebody has got out of bed and is still, which indicates there may have been a fall, without having the extra member of staff on that floor. Um, mm -hmm. So you are assisting someone to do their job. And in a way, you're replacing an extra person because you don't need the body's ears to check mm -hmm. out for that. The ears, yeah. you know, the, the technology can be the ears and eyes of multiple people as long as you've got people that are able to react to the monitoring 
then that's that's where you can change the landscape okay but it's quite it is quite different because assistive technology from where i come from would be something that would be looked for by the individual and it would be something whereby say for example i struggle if you give me verbal commands mm. yeah it would be something that would enable me to take your verbal command and take that turn that into written command so that actually i have it in a way that makes sense to me and that's out there as well you know um, is, it, is it an umbrella um because i think we had this conversation when you came into um i think that meeting we did before graham um i think it's that there isn't i don't know if the sector necessarily maybe there needs to be a broader term for it because i think well, it yeah. i think that's the thing when I, mean, I was watching last night i don't know what the program was it's chris packham and it was about um autism i think i missed the beginning bit of it and i didn't realize that did you watch it i don't know what I didn't, it but no he, oh, ken bruce his son and it's I've never seen what the guy looked like, actually, but his son is um, doesn't speak at all. He's autistic, um, so he's completely non-verbal, but he uses, so um, mentally, intellectually, he, he he's able, but people don't tend to um, converse with him because he has to do it through um, or using assistive tech, which... He uses, like, like AAC that, technology, where you press things and it... And it, it, it the talk. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you see, I think from my language that the, what you're talking about isn't so much assistive tech, what you're talking. And, and actually, that's what assistive tech is defined at, at, at parliamentary level as well, because I've, I've you know, been to um, mm -hmm. Policy Connect to talk about AT and it's all about the kind of technology I'm talking about. What I think that is that you're talking about is digital transformation within an industry. How can mm. we digitize parts of this industry mm -hmm. in order to transform the way that the industry is done? And yeah, um, there's like, a lot of that going on. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think I think it's interesting. I think it, I just think it's interesting that different industries are using or different sectors are using the same terminology but in a very yes. different way yes. and, but, and that's com but that's confusing i think when people then hear these conversations going on because they might rightly or wrongly it make assumes. assumptions yeah, yeah. But I think there's, a, there's a big problem i think in i mean i think part of uh, paul we sort of graham and um, graham ian and i had spoken to the care connects network about doing the training that there'd been money allocated to offer training. And even that was a massive headache. And we backed out of it all in the end because, and I spoke at length with Graham about this. And one of the big problems was that, well, there was money there to train carers because people, you know, people in the care sector need training. But then, then you know, we had to put something together. And the issue then was, well, the issue we had that we had to jump through a whole load of hoops to then put to a bunch of people that didn't, Really get it themselves so i had someone like graham that we were speaking to someone like me that can do the you know can write training asking other people and they were saying well no we're not happy with that and i'm thinking but you don't actually know about this anyway so in the end it just then we said well how would it work in terms of training carers because you've got so many different things out there and they said we just pick some and train them and i'm thinking what oh that's not going to work is it so in the end, we just backed out of it. So I don't know what, and I think it is a problem really, because you've got, as I'm sure you'll see Paula in a few weeks, we'll be talking about it, that a lot of managers still are of the age where it's all quite new. Some might be um, resistant to it. You've got maybe younger workers that can use it. But a lot of the problem is we said, you know, you kind of needed um, some sort of um, ambassador or, so, or a champion mm -hmm. that would be the person that would be the, maybe the younger person that understands that, that would be the person that would be championing that, that would yeah. understand that to be able to to get what they're talking about. Because I go to the care shows and I think, well, I, every other stand 
is it's tech. Yeah. And if yeah. you don't communicate with people in a way yeah. that they can. And I think as well, part of it is, as you say, Marianne, the youngsters are happy to incorporate it into their practice, but the managers who are overseeing it don't understand it and they're responsible for it. So I think that there needs to be that middle sort of ground whereby there's mentoring and training and there is the um, NHS digital um, and digital social care there are courses for people who are reluctant with digital transformation um, but again it's time it's the encouragement mm. to do it it's the confidence to go for it I think yeah. I'm seeing in a lot more of the companies now and, and actually um, Nicola you know she'd spoken to a company to say that because a lot of the um, people that work in sales these companies now are realizing that they're having to um, train people mm -hmm. but actually if they're going to train people if you're going to do it effectively they might be sales people but they need to know how to, to train people effectively because actually i think that's potentially more realistically where mm -hmm. that's going to happen in all honesty that's where it's going to happen because because also, if you're selling to people that don't really get this stuff, you're going to have to educate them as well. So oh, that's how you're going to... I've definitely seen a lot of that in industries that I've been involved with, and it, and it's a ma I think it's a massive problem, which is that actually training comes from sales. Training comes out of part of the sales process. Mm. It's kind of a promised thing as part of sales and of course actually one of the biggest problems with that is that once you've made the sale as a salesman not not putting every salesman in the same box but a lot of sales people once they've made the sale their kpis and their objectives are to move on to the yeah. next sale and get the next sale so really do they really care about the the next bit they should because mm -hmm. you know you want to you want to maintain and grow and get respect from that client but unfortunately, a lot of the time it's like sold it. I'm moving on over there now. But oh gosh, I've got to go back and care about delivering some training over there. And actually, half the time that training is just kind of reiterating the sales yeah. pattern again, as opposed to actually training. Um, Do you see that all... many are doing it now, Paula? Because I, 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 I think when I go out now more, I'm seeing that they're realising that. Um, they get less problems because obviously if people can't yes. use it it's going to cause problems so i'm seeing yeah. i don't know if i can say the company or not Okay. No, I think I think especially with the digital social care records you do get a training package included in the price and that's delivered but the problem is by the time the whole staff team have come to implement it they've forgotten so it's that support the sort of aftercare support that you get with the best sort of companies um yeah. and if i recommend anybody it's because they give good aftercare and good support not just because of the package that it offers um well, that, and because to me that's part of training isn't it mm. because because also how do you know how do you know what to yeah. deliver training wise mm -hmm. unless you've actually had some kind of feedback in the process you know until people have actually started getting their hands on stuff and gone actually yeah. we use this with this and this isn't working particularly and how do we get that to work with this and how do how do you know we do it like this so how do we make it work like this how do you apply effective training so yeah. tra training in all of those circumstances to me has to be a kind of ongoing affair really because you've yes, got to you've got to deliver and then learn and then deliver yeah. and then learn it's got to, it's got to be like that and that's where um the training needs to be done by people that understand the industry that you're going into especially in care it's you need to know why that risk assessment goes with that piece of equipment and why that person needs it and how to link it um so yeah, that idea of that almost having um i think this is what i'd heard talked about before was if you had um whoever from the, the company the 
tech company, or whatever you want to call it, kind of work teaming with somebody from that come uh, the you know, the care company or customer yeah. them that become that. Um, it's like a that link person, isn't it? And, and, yeah. yeah. So I think the idea we kind of had was that you had the, these people that were sort of trained to be able to train these people, who would then be the champion that would then train. Um, yeah. these people and I think particularly as somebody I know that works in um CCTV um sector who who'd say actually I really think our sales guys that are um I think engineers as well they need it because he'd watch them because they have to show people how to use the systems but he mm -hmm. says uh, you know there's times I see that they are tech people and they don't necessarily understand the training side because that's not what not what yeah. they do and and so actually equipping people and training them um then means that that they're going to have less problems because people are going to be able to use the systems they're going to be happier ultimately aren't they mm. which is important, important do, do you see problems paula where training doesn't happen at every level and um, because i quite often see an issue where like Within a within a structure within an organisation, someone at the top goes, "Well, actually, the people that need the training are those people down there because they're the people that are using this, etc." Mm -hmm. But because there's no dissemination of training, almost back up to the top, even okay. even if it's a different kind of training, just to go, "Well, actually, what your people are trying to achieve with this over here is this." Yeah, yeah? they there's there's a you know. Uh, something in the way of them then understanding what on earth they're trying to achieve over there with this so yeah. it, you know when when the the feedback comes back it's not doing this well we bought it for you we've given you the training yeah, but but you don't understand <laughs> Yeah. And that's where, as I say, the better systems have tiers of training and it's where the managers need to be brought on board and why they are reluctant to implement something that they don't understand. But unless you understand the reason for the technology, you're not going to implement the technology properly. You need to know why you're using it and what you hope to get from it in order to use it properly to the best of its ability. Yeah. Do you, do you I wonder when I'm at some of the care shows, I mean, like I said, every other one, I, um, you sort of, you're hit with those of them, isn't it? Now it's it, virtually every other one. And what I tend to see then is that, and this is where we talked about this whole idea of having a champion, that if the champion went to the shows, they would be the ones that would know because you see but i walk along and i think thank god i'm not looking for all this stuff because i'd have no idea because there's so many and you think well how does anybody know who to pick is it the person that's got the best sales pitch mm -hmm. is it the one that's got the yeah. prettiest plans when actually if you had somebody that was going there with the sole purpose of that they know like you said they know what the service requirements are because i'm not always necessarily i'm not exclusively sure if the people that are selling do necessarily fully understand what the need care sector yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think i think there are there are a lot better now um and i think probably because the market's quite saturated with a lot of digital systems um a lot of people on facebook managers groups are asking about what should i do there are some quite good guides out there um, but also, I always say to them, have a demonstration of any that you like. Yep. Go to the shows, look and listen, but don't decide on the day. Come away and think, what do I need for my service? And ask each one, do you do this? How do you do this? Um, and I don't think there's any perfect, probably 100% totally good I, I know a few that I really like, but you know there will be gaps. You could, anything that you can try. And when we had Dean on the other week, I mentioned that, and I told you and something, Paul, and you commented, being able to try something to me mm. that says a lot about a company. If you're going to let me try it before I buy it, and if you're going to let me say no because yeah. it just doesn't work for me, then yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be more like. 
that I do, I do, I mean, with, with digital care planning, it's such, it's not even as though they tie you into long contracts, but they know the implementation is so t costly for staff time. If you've got 30 residents in a care home that you have to upload all of that information and all of the risk assessments and all of the weights, you're not going to change you're really not going to change um, providers very quickly. You will stick with it. And that's why it's important to get all the information before you start. Yeah, that that whole thing about cost and time. I was going to ask you a bit about that because, you, you know, a little while back in this conversation, you said about, well, isn't it a shame that actually in, in professions like dental nursing, for example, they are allowed to do most of their training online mm -hmm. in what is essentially essentially a you know a, a practical yeah. uh, industry however you understand it from a from a sort of commercial perspective right when you've got limited staff you're trying to make as much money as possible as a business <laughs> etc you know you haven't got staff that can necessarily you'd have to close mm -hmm. in order to do training that's in person around a particular area mm -hmm. and there's a massive cost to that whereas if you can get people to whiz onto a computer do the odd five minutes here 10 minutes there whatever in their lunch break whatever when you know when they're not being paid to do it or whatever then it kind of commercially makes sense however having said all of that there's a massive issue with all of that. And one of the big issues that I see of all of that, and it actually does uh, spring right back up to management level as well, is that I, when I was still doing workplace assessments, especially around areas of like specific learning difficulties, et cetera, the amount of managers that I was now going to see, maybe in their, their late 40s, 50s, et cetera, who were now, only but now, in their career struggling because up until that point they could have proven that they knew what they knew by practically demonstrating it mm. but we're now having to fill in tests and write write stuff to to prove what they what they know and if you've got someone with dyslexia for example suddenly mm. their world has collapsed because yeah. whereas they could go out before and practically demonstrate that they know this stuff now they've got to write it all and it's 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 not working for them and it's just you know not giving people inclusive ways of actually learning and accessing information is a problem in itself is it not it's actually causing some people that have got the experience could probably really help other people learn from their experience to just fail in their careers now because now they're having to do it a different way just to fit in with this kind of tick box mentality. Yeah, I think in some ways that's one of the benefits of in in the care sector that CQC don't actually prescribe how they you need the training. So um <laughs> Having that creativity and being able to demonstrate that people are competent with what they do because of the way they're trained, whether that's online, whether that's face to face, um, you know, with Marianne's AET. Is it AET, Marianne? Is that, have yeah. I got the right thing? With, yeah. with, the, with the AET that Marianne delivers, you're teaching people to teach. So if a care company could invest in just four or five key staff who yeah. then are teaching as they are providing that care why can that not be classed as a teaching session as a manual handling you know competency session and that's where we need to think outside the box that's where we need to be creative upskill those that can to to deliver in in those creative ways in ways that people um learn best yeah it, no, absolutely it, and, and i think the other thing is you're keeping people 
that might ordinarily, I mean, that was one of the other things that we were doing with some of the training was that you, it's like, if you can't recruit people in, mm. keep the ones you've got. And that a lot of people are neurodiverse that work in the care sector. Yes. And I know for me, I got, I worked, I, you know, I started off working for the council on the help desk. I worked in Eden. So, God, I had millions of jobs. Not, and, and I got bored. The problem was I got bored and straight off they'd say, you can't go for a senior position unless you've been there a year. And I'd be like, oh my Lord, I can't do that. So off I'd go. Not because I wasn't any good. And so if you can train people up, and whether it's going to go into management or they're going to go into training, you are actually, because I look so many times, I go in to deliver training and, and they'll say, well, half the people haven't come. And I'm thinking, what's going to happen to the other half then? And they go, and, I'm, and whereas like you say, if you've got people, and it really is relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of other training, just, you know, if you if paying for someone like me or whoever, it doesn't really matter if it's me, to, to train those people for three days, the amount of money that's saved it's not just the money it's the fact mm -hmm. that people actually get that training because you can say oh can you just work with so and so she was off when we had that training mm -hmm. you know, or can you just work on this because they weren't and the other side of it i saw a while ago was that i had um, i went to a care home and they had 12 of them that were doing the AT. but they did it um unaccredited actually because you don't have to you can just do you know right, yeah and 12 of them and all of those English was their second language Amazing. which I thought was really interesting though because mm -hmm. it was going to give them another viewpoint because when I go in to do training I get no extra time to deliver mm -hmm. training to people and most of those people English is their second language and I can only work with the time I've got but I thought for, for them it was um, really good because they've got you know that understanding but if you've got staff members that maybe don't fully understand things if you've got another staff member that can oh we've lost your vocals for a second there we go um i was i was just going to say i was just going to say uh yes I, I was go, yeah i was going to mention i was going to mention that the hoodie uh, so marianne today for all of you who are listening to this uh is wearing a, a, a better way o life hoodie um because the the little strand bit that comes down from the hood is is uh, obliterating the off. Oh, there it is. A, a better way of life. Um, and I was going to say, in in keeping with the name of uh, of the podcast and our ethos, really, let's go back to the question that I said earlier. So we're not in a crisis. What's the great opportunity, Paula, for the care sector as you see it at the moment? What what is it that the care sector needs to grasp in order to 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 make the care sector great? I think the public are becoming aware of the the cost of care. I think the public are becoming aware that it is something that we may all need in the future. So they need to be thinking about it now. The government has kicked the can down the road for decades. Um, and I don't think we're going to get anywhere with that anytime soon. But having having a sector that's backed by the public and is empowered to say we need to do this different. Again, a lot is about the funding. But if we could work with artificial intelligence and different technologies that could support the managers, support the staff, we may not need such high ratios to deliver equally good and safe care. And that's where I think the opportunity lies. We may not fill the 500,000 vacancies that are out there, but we can still care for people and look after them if we have both community support and regulatory support for using technology. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my opinion. Do I'm realistic. you... Realistic. Yeah. Thank you. Do, you. do you think that enough of us actually think about whether or not we will need care in our I latter don't. years? It, I think it's way down the list. And I, I think young people don't envisage getting old. 
um, it's a totally different subject. I don't even want to go into it, but it frightens me the fact that assisted dying is out on the agenda because young people think when I get to them, I just want to go. And therefore, how long before they say they're there, I don't want, you know, I'm doing it for my parents. It's like, OK, will we ever come to a place where we don't have old people or disabled people because they're not valued? And for me, that that's a horrific thought. Um, so I'd rather work out ways of as community valuing um, older people, um, maybe because I'm getting there myself, you know, but really yeah. Yeah. Do you do you do both of you think that maybe uh, we may have to change our viewpoint um, or certainly generations coming through may need to change their viewpoint in terms of, you know, doing it for me, as it were, because I think we've had generations now of people that are like, well, I need to get I need to strive everything is about independence if you like i need to strive to to get out of the house away from the family stand on my own two feet do this get the car get the mortgage get the job get the da -da -da -da. um and actually with all of the things that are happening cost of living crisis the fact that you know uh fewer and fewer young people can get on the the, the mortgage ladder etc you know is part of is part of the answer actually we perhaps need to go back to community value a little bit more. We perhaps actually need to perhaps think about, well, maybe we're living extended families. Maybe we need to look after each other a bit longer. Maybe we just need help with that. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe it's a look, it's going to look and feel a different way. I think the problem we've got is communities are so different now, aren't they? Much more transient. I mean, I haven't lived in that many places and I've, come back to where I was from and I think Holly you saw the, the you know I go and help at the church um coffee morning which is this Saturday I think it is so I'll be there again um and actually what it does do it helps you see all those people who do need help and you know I know that there's times I've needed it as well not that old yet but I've needed but it just makes you aware of the help that people do need Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that just within there, and it's not about whether we go to church because it isn't about that. People come through that door into the hall. And if it's we know that we need help, we put things together. And I think those are the kind of things that keep people. A friend of mine was just saying that his mum's just had a knee replacement. She's at home and I think the daughter's been helping and and very independent. And I think the more that people have people around them to, you know, my neighbour, you know, he, he 76, uh, fell, broke his hip, had that done. On off, he's off again. He's doing all the trees locally for the council. But at times, I still feel like people don't really appreciate him maybe enough. But what I know is that, you know, I go and see him daily. I have a cup of tea with him. I have a chat. I borrow food. I borrow milk. Um, but it keeps him, you know, when I say my back's been bad this week and he said, can I go out and get you? something for that that it's about that and I think young people can and do want to you know I know my son's school they go in to the nursing home that's across the road and, and I think young people do want to if they're given the opportunity yeah and, them the and that's true themselves. that's true social care isn't it social care isn't just being in a care home or receiving care in your home social care is our social community being social with other people um, and I think supporting people that do that um, is, is just as important yeah. as the actual training of people in care homes. I just get well, people to be more aware because when people don't wouldn't need to buy that service in I found somebody that fell on the floor down the road and I went and helped her up naturally as if I would mm. I took her home and I looked as I took her in I thought whoa there's something a bit wrong here I mean there was a big problem so I straight away was like trying to look around because she had care and and again Paul I think you know about this and I rang this number and I said um this lady's here she's fallen 
um, to, to somebody look after and they said oh yes yes she's one of ours somebody's been out to her today already and, and I said well I kind of just need someone to be aware of the fact that she's fallen I don't think she hit her head mm. she doesn't need to go to hospital but I feel like I ought to tell somebody yeah and they said um well we're short staffed and well that, and that was it really and then they just I think in the end they said can we take your name and number nobody ever called me back but I went back to her later on and I went back with my sons and we went and made sure she had something to eat and I sat with her for a bit but I kind of felt a bit sad really that I did that because well whether it's because of what I do but oh, yeah where's, where's the rest of it? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I thought, what's happened here? I couldn't leave her like that. And I went back the next day. But, I just yeah, think I, I, mean, I think we've gone through a period where you know it's it's been so unusual to have mm -hmm. real community that it all it's become is become the sort of uh, the the value that we watch on TV or the, 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 you know, the novelty that we see on the internet, because, you know, and when you, when you watch something, not decrying these shows, by the way, but when you watch something like DIY SOS and you see the whole community gather around to help build the, the extension that the family could never have built because, you know, dad's now ill or, or, or whatever, you know, everybody loves watching it. Right. Yeah, they do. But well, yeah. But the but the thing is, we almost watch it like, wow, that's just, just isn't it amazing? But it's like, once, once a, but but once a, once upon a time, that wouldn't have been wow because because but the community you, would have just done it. You know? Yeah, but do you, do you think as well? We've got a generation of older people who are so independent. Yes, they would ask their family. You know, they go to their family and ask for what they need. But the family has moved away, but they're not going to ask strangers because they're so fiercely independent. Mm. And, you know, is is that also a problem, a barrier to creating community as well? I think yeah. people don't I think people don't like asking. I um, with a friend was helping someone the other day and I ended up going around just to go and see this friend and transpired that this person it's a younger person it's really struggling who there's people that should be aware that this person may have and through no fault of her own at all and actually me and a friend ended up spending all weekend uh, all saturday sorry helping this person out and i just thought oh wow i didn't even know i didn't even know and and as it was you know i i helped but i thought how many doors are there that are closed where we don't know that can i can I tell you, I just learned from my daughter yesterday that her grandmother, my mother, 81, got herself on the bus to go to the hospital for a checkup. She had not told any of her driving sons or daughters that she needed to go for an appointment. Oh, you're all too busy. Mother. So, you know, there is that generational thing of being independent as well. So. Wow. So there you go. Thank mm -hmm. you, Paula. That's been a brilliant conversation. This is bound to have sparked some conversation between everybody Thank that's you, listening Paula. out I there. Really busy as well. You're always really busy. <laughs> you, it, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Is it next week, the week after? We'll finalise details. We'll have, we've got, I've got heart surgery. Well, not me. I haven't got heart surgery. Oliver's got heart no. surgery. And so it's the following week. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. there you go. No, seriously, thank you so much for coming on today, Paul. If you've been, uh, you know, if you've been listening today and you've, you've, you know, heard the conversation, what, what do you think? You know, have you got a view on uh, what's happening within the care sector? Uh, have we become all far, far too fiercely independent as, as beings? You know, do we need to find some ways of getting back to community again? I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts uh, as this goes out over the week. Um, Enjoy the rest of your uh, 
day, Paula. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, and folks, if you've been listening, enjoy the rest of your day as well. Uh, if if anyone would be interested, by the way, we'd like to just put out some feelers out there. If anyone would be interested in getting hold of uh, some A Better Way of Life merchandise, uh, please let us know, because uh, we, we might do that. Just say I've got some bags one of those things. Print, actually. Got, uh, Marianne's going to print some bags. Um, yes. well, it's not. We're not looking to make a lot of money on it. We're, we're just looking to cover costs. So that um, nice, so it's that nice, you can join in the fun. That's what it is. Until next time, thanks for watching. Better way of life. Until next time, bye for now. <laughs>